true that every pitcher who leaves the Pirates becomes a superstar, but it does appear to be increasingly true that those who did cheated. Good morning to you. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Pirates. Comes your way bright and early every weekday morning. If you're into football and or hockey, I also offer up daily shots of Steelers and Penguins. First, Garrett Cole conducts the most awkward, excruciating interview of the year in all of professional sports when he's asked if he uses a sticky substance on his fingers and he waits like 15 seconds before hemming and hawing about how he doesn't know how to answer the question. My goodness. It's like watching Curb Your Enthusiasm. You know, when Larry David goes into a restaurant, sits down to order, and you're just like, oh, no, oh, no. What's he going to say? Oh, no. That's how I felt watching that. But now... Now that Major League Baseball yesterday officially, formally issued a memo reminding everyone of existing rules regarding banned substances being applied to the ball, and now that we're seeing pitchers take the mound such as, oh, I don't know, Tyler Anderson from the Pirates last night in Washington, and all of a sudden have their spin rates magically plummet, and suddenly they can't get any swings and misses and don't look anything like they did before this edict came out, some pitchers are actually having the gall to speak up in defense of dot, 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 cheating. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Like, Trevor Bauer, I expected it from, meaning A, it was obvious he was cheating, and B, he's Trevor Bauer. So when he set off this whole social media spree yesterday ripping Major League Baseball because they did this in the middle of the season and how dare they do this to us in the middle of the season when they had the whole offseason and we could have adjusted and we could have learned. You were cheating. No one is going to bend over to help you adjust from cheating. The solution was to not cheat. And then came Tyler Glass now who most unfortunately has a significant elbow injury that might or might not require surgery. He seemed to suggest that there's a chance he could come back for the playoffs for the Rays, but we'll see about that. But it's a UCL tear, and that's not something that you recover easily from. And he showed up for a media call with those covering the team in St. Petersburg, and I mean, this just has to be heard to be believed. And I'm not trying to blame anyone. I'm not trying to say, like, oh, this is all MLB's fault. Like, they got thrown into this situation, too. They're doing the best they possibly can to navigate around this. They're trying to make this fair for people. I understand that. But you can't – whether you want us to not use sticky stuff or not is, is, is fine. Fine. Do it in the off season. Give us a chance to adjust to it. But I just threw 80-something, 70-whatever innings – and then you just told me I can't use anything in the middle of the year. I had to change everything I've been doing the entire season, everything out of the window. I have to start doing something completely new. And then I'm telling you, I truly believe that's why I got hurt. Me throwing 100 and being 6'7 is why I got hurt, but that contributed. And so I'm, I'm just frustrated that like they don't understand how hard it is to pitch one, but to tell us to do something completely different in the middle of a season is insane. I just don't, it's, it's ridiculous. There has to be some give and take here. You can't just take away everything and not add something. Pitchers need to be able to have some sort of control or some sort of grip on the ball. And I, I just don't want things like this to happen to somebody else. I don't want a fastball to sail away and hit somebody in the face like it already has. So I just think like, I understand you need to take an aggressive approach here, but like, I just think people are going about it all wrong. And I'm sitting here, my lifelong dream, I want to go out and win a Cy Young. I want to be an all-star. And then now it's all just shit on because I like, now it's over, and I can't. I and now I have to try and rehab to come back in the playoffs. So I'm clearly frustrated. It's just I think there needs to be a lot more.
people need to, to figure this out. You can't just tell us to use nothing. It's crazy. One more time from the top rope. There is no arguable defense of cheating. The rules are in the book. You know the rules or else you wouldn't be hiding all of the attempts to cheat. Think about that for a second. Like if you just thought it was all okay, why not just walk out there with a can of stickum? You know, and have it be visible to everyone. Why? Because you know it's cheating. Is the defense that everyone does it. This is the, the steroid defense, by the way. Everyone's doing it. Okay, we don't know that. We don't know that. We can see, via the spin rates in particular, which pitchers had dramatic changes in their natural spin rates, such as, you know, Cole and Bauer and Glass now and Anderson from the Pirates and maybe some other guys as well. Maybe a lot of some other guys. Maybe it is, as some players have estimated, as high as 80%. But you cheated. You cheated. You have nothing that you can say in your defense about cheating. It's an open and shut case. I like glass now. Always have. I, I like coal. Always have. When they were with the Pirates. But one thing that I can't rule out here in all of the uproar that's occurred over the past few years about players leaving Pittsburgh and suddenly getting great If they were cheating while they were with the Pirates, it sure didn't show. Whereas a lot of data strongly suggests that Cole, once he left for Houston, and Glass now, once he left for Tampa, became dramatically, immediately better. And now that they've had this taken away, this cheating, A, Cole's getting creamed, and B, Glass now, whatever. I mean, you heard him blame his injury for it. How, how that happens, I have no idea. Just, it, it's something to think about here. It's something to think about. Funny thing about the Pirates, if you go back through the steroid scandal... And pretty much every other scandal, they emerge, like, completely clean, you know? It doesn't mean that they didn't have anybody. There's a handful of players that I'm sure you can name just as easily as I can off the top of your head who you suspected of using the steroids. And just as you can feel the same way about some of the current pitchers that they have on the team and whether or not they're using the sticky stuff... But I just can't help but kind of rewind the clock a little bit and ask myself, you know, maybe the Pirates should have been cheating all this time too, right? When we come back, just one question. Time for just one question, and it's always brought to you by good folks at North Shore Tavern, directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's the home to Steak on a Stone, home to the only dedicated front-to-back, side-to-side pirate sports bar anywhere on the planet. Come down and check out North Shore Tavern, which, yes, is open and eager for your business on non-game days as well. Today's question comes from Jeffrey Bobek, who asks, seriously asking, what is Derek Shelton's talent as a manager? Going back to John McGraw and Connie Mack, every manager has had something, teaching, game strategy, pitcher management, inspiration, etc. What, if any, do you see in this guy? Well, the Pirates have now lost nine games in a row. 
and the Pirates are now 20 games under 500. And it's been infinitely more bad than good for several weeks. And we like young players. We, all of us. I'm sure you do. I know I do. And when we look at this roster and we see a Kibrian Hayes, even Brian Reynolds, who's not super young, he's 26. Uh, Adam Frazier, who isn't that young, he's 29, but he, you know, he's leading the majors in hits. We're seldom inclined to blame the players. We're going to look at the manager. And I kind of get the sense you're doing that too from your this guy reference. What do you see in this guy? Uh, and apologies in advance if I'm misinterpreting the tone of your question. I don't know. I don't know what kind of manager Shelton is. I don't know how anybody could know. Um, I've made this case previously, and I made it when you know, things were going pretty well for the Pirates in April, that until we see him in a position where the team's top priority, where the organization's top priority is what's happening that day in Pittsburgh. It's going to be a really hard read. If you're asking me what I feel is his greatest strength as a game manager, you might laugh at this, but I really liked the way he's handled the bullpen right up until Clay Holmes started imploding. And we've seen other guys kind of fall off as well. Even David Bednar, who seemed immaculate up until a couple of weeks ago. I thought his handling of the bullpen, especially in light of not getting much length from the starters, was a strong suit. I have not liked his handling of his bench, but then again, what's your difference there? Bullpen good, bench bad. Handling of bench bad, you know? Uh, it's just so hard to get a read from a game management standpoint. But if you're asking me on another level what I've liked the most about him, it's been the attention to fundamentals. It has. They've had a couple of high-profile, horrific mistakes that because they're the Pirates and because they are where they are in the standings, got magnified to wild extremes, and particularly the Will Craig one. But this team, ranking in the top seven or eight in almost every defensive category, in spite of their record, speaks very highly to the manager. And the fact that they have these analytics to support this, even though they don't really have great defensive players other than Kibrian Hayes and Jacob Stallings, that speaks even more highly. You saw the catch Brian Reynolds made last night in center field. He's not even a center fielder. I'd like to think that the instruction and everything else that they put into all their work contributed at least somewhat, to Reynolds looking pretty good in the center. I think it's a good coaching staff from that standpoint, and that does swing back to the manager. Look, I'm, I'm not naive here. I know nobody wants to hear anything good about them right now. You know, But I also know that this team's got nowhere near the talent that it needs, and what it does have is still not participating often enough. And by that, believe it or not, I'm not referring to Frazier getting a scheduled day off last night. I'm referring more to Colin Moran not being available, Cabrian Hayes missing the better part of two months. We haven't even seen what they have on a regular basis. It's just so hard, Jeff. It, it really is. I appreciate the way you're asking the question. I appreciate the passion behind caring about whether or not this is the guy moving forward. 
Uh, I feel pretty good about him at this phase. I might not. I might not in the future, depending on how he handles having better talent in a better contending situation. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates, and we will do another one tomorrow. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to our DK Pittsburgh Sports channel, and don't forget to hit the bell to get notified every time we post a new video or podcast.